so we have stated the gap right now that <clears throat> as a as a as a you know uh, academic writer uh, that is your uh, i should say ultimate objective in carrying out uh, research that you that you reasonably narrow down your research and then you reasonably narrow down your research and then uh, within that narrowed field you review the material you review the published research and then uh, with reference to that research you identify the gap and then the rest of the paper that you write after literature review that attempts to fill that gap i'll pause once again just for one minute Okay, students, once again. So you identify that gap and in rest of the paper that you write, you attempt to fill that gap. And that is how you uh, make a contribution in the existing literature on that particular topic in that particular field and area in which you are working. <clears throat> and then the researcher who takes up the similar topic in future will review uh, you know a lot of literature including the work that you published okay and that is how the research continues now continuing with the writing process <clears throat> writing your literature review so some there are some uh, you know specialized uh, instructions uh, you know some points of caution that you need to keep in mind as far as the process is concerned i have told you that is the whole process okay now there are some you know points to be kept in mind one use evidence while you are writing your literature review by that we mean that when we when we state our findings out of one particular article and we rephrase the expression of the writers in our own words then we should somehow reflect to our reader that we are well aware of the resource that we are reviewing one way to give this impression to the reader that we are aware of our resources to use some evidence from 
that resource and what will be the evidence small quotes small phrases short phrases from that primary text uh, by primary i mean uh, it will be secondary text but uh, uh, the the material that we are reviewing the material under review use some evidence from there then be selective in your writing of literature review this connects back to the point one point that i discussed in the previous slide so when you read one whole article 25 27 pages about or on the topic on which you are writing your own paper it is always possible for that particular writer to have not only a contention but a number of sub contentions as well in her or his own paper now it's not possible for you to summarize the whole article of 27 pages or 25 pages into your literature review you have to be a little selective in what you should include and what you should not include but of course in the process of being selective do not ignore the important information okay so just capture that information which is directly relevant to what you want to explore in your paper so for example don't go into the details of how that particular writer has explored racism in the social imagery i i'm referring to the example fictitious example that i used so don't go into those details what kind of secondary resources that author has used you just need to say the basic thing that this writer has explored racism yes but that the writer has explored racism through the social imagery you can give an example for that but don't comment on the research process of that writer that will be like you know going into too much detail so be selective also be selective in terms of choosing a resource to be reviewed sometimes as i told you earlier you can be selective just by determine, determining for yourself whether or not a resource is relevant to your contention and to your topic so that is a one that is one way to be selective but there is another way to be selective which is that sometimes you find a research an article or a paper or a book to be less authentic sometimes you realize that this work has not been published by any major publisher sometimes you realize that this is a self publication there might be quite a number of criteria for you to uh, decide in the long run the authenticity or credibility of the work that is un under consideration sometimes you have a look at some part of a work and you realize that the research uh, which this researcher has carried out is is does not follow the standard norms for example you might realize that this article or this book does not have a literature review or very sketchy literature review so be selective in that also okay do not just pick everything which comes in your way and include in your literature review that will in fact uh, uh, invalidate your literature review body of your literature review so be selective on that end as well and of course that will reduce your job as too okay is very often that you find various papers on various topics written by students for their class assignments and they upload it on various websites okay clearly you should you know uh, walk away from such articles such papers okay so be selective on that end too now in opposed to the first first point use evidence uh, here is another you know uh, caution when you use quotes use them sparingly now for literature review try to avoid if possible full length quotes 
Now, this caution uh, depends a lot on the length of your own paper. So if you are writing, for example, 7,000 word paper uh, and uh, you want to use some lengthy quotes, probably it will be fine over there. Okay, but if you're writing a short article, then big quotes, you know, in 300 words literature review, if you are going to put a quote of 150 words, that, that won't make any sense, okay? So do use quotes, but use them sparingly. So what instead you should do, you should keep your own voice, you know? When you rephrase uh, a particular material, a particular resource in your own words, that gives uh, an added edge to your literature review, which is that you are able to keep your voice dominant in your paper. And that makes your paper more convincing in the long run. Another added para, uh, caution is that when you paraphrase, I have been saying it uh, in the previous slide as well, that you paraphrase the writer's uh, ideas, perspectives, observations in your own words. But when you paraphrase, do that very carefully. Uh, there are two special points of caution. One is that you should keep, while you are paraphrasing, you should keep the uh, sense of credit in your mind. That is, you should credit the original writer whose words you are paraphrasing. It shouldn't sound like that you are the one thinking these particular ideas. So that is one point of caution. In other words, we can say that you should give credit to the original writer that Miss So or So or Mr. So and So says this and then continue to paraphrase. So that is first point of caution in paraphrasing. Uh, uh, the care that you should, uh, you know, take into account while paraphrasing. The other uh, point of caution is that in your paraphrase, you should stay as close to the intent of the original author at is, as it is possible. Uh, I said this previously uh, as well, okay, but this point comes up once again. Uh, to, while we are paraphrasing, we shouldn't lose the original sense of the article because that reflects on our credibility as a researcher too. Uh, it goes without saying that you should revise your literature review. In fact, in, when I explained the writing process in the first slide, uh, revision was inbuilt in the whole process. So I told you that you have article one, two, three, four, five, and you have findings from those articles into uh, into MS Word document that you are developing and you have those findings from each article in fragments, but then now you are, that is the first draft, right? But then you divide that first draft to merge all those findings into one continuous paragraph or maybe two continuous paragraphs, right? So that is revision, okay? And then at the third phase, you can revise for language, okay? Make sure that there is a smooth transition from one author to the other author and that you are not repeating the vocabulary, okay? You, you are using a variety of language while you are commenting upon those authors. And the last thing, cite properly. I, I said it previously too in, in a different context, but uh, once again, sometimes uh, there is a uh, very brief thought and we feel that probably it doesn't require citation. That is not the case, okay? If we feel that we don't have time to cite, we probably should drop that idea at all, okay? But do not keep any idea from another author without properly citing it. And of course, the word properly also means that we should follow the conventions of the style that we are using, MLA or whatever. Okay, now about organization. How the literature review, the body of literature review, this part of your paper, how does it uh, look like? What should be its uh, internal organization? Broadly speaking, because we are aware of those terms, therefore it's uh, easier to understand it this way. Uh, so there should be one or two lines introduction of 
literature review while you start writing it. For example, you can state the purpose of that literature review. There are various ways to put that, but please remember, do not make it stand independent of what goes before your literature review. So after you have given introduction of your paper, and now you are going to begin with your uh, literature review, you can begin something like that. Taking the same example of Charles Dickens, many writers or many critics have already explored the theme of race in Charles Dickens. Now, when you say that, that implies an introductory line. The your reader is going to anticipate that in the subsequent lines, you are going to exemplify your statement. And that is exactly what you will do. So some introductory line in the beginning. And then in the body of the literature review, you mention all those writers or critics whose work you are reviewing. That is the review of the literature. That is literature review. Now, here is one uh, you know, important thing about what should be the order of those five works that we are going to mention. The most uh, uh, common and convincing order is chronological. Because uh, usually the later research depends on uh, the preceding research, the research which was uh, you know, conducted before this particular research. Therefore, literature review builds on, okay? So the best way to uh, go about uh, literature review and putting down findings from each author is in such a manner that you should pick the authors or the publications in the chronological order. The work which was published first could be mentioned in your literature review first. So this is one way to organize your literature review. But the other ways are also equally valid. Another way is to have a thematic organization and then methodological organization. Both of these things, thematic and methodological, we mostly use them where the research project is very broad and there are multiple themes under your project. In that case, you might say that, uh, or you might like that you organize your uh, literature review uh, according to theme wise. So three, uh, uh, resources could be lumped together under one theme and three other under another theme and three under, under, under another theme. Uh, example of that is, for example, if it is your uh, thesis size research project and you are working on an author and that author has uh, multiple, has dealt with multiple themes in a variety of his works and you have a contention about the author, okay? Um, maybe you are working on Emily Dickinson, uh, who has written a lot of metaphysical poetry, well, metaphysical in, 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 well, mystic poetry. And you read her and you realized that uh, probably she is the most pragmatic poet you have come across ever. And you want to interpret her as, uh, as a materialist poet. Okay, so that is your contention, all right? You need to have literature review. So you have all that literature review. You read like 50 or 60 articles about, you know, uh, about the debate of mysticism versus materialism in Emily Dickens, Dickinson's poetry, right? So you have all that, uh, all that material and all those resources with you. Now you would like to, uh, because you are dealing with, uh, you know, huge uh, research project, 
you would like to organize your you would like to organize your material according to themes right so you might like to take the theme of uh, uh, death and mysticism life and mysticism uh, religion and mysticism so on and so forth all possible aspects of mysticism which have been discussed in amritical sir but organization would be thematic and you will tell your reader that you are going to review the literature published on emily dickinson's poetry uh, according to theme wise and then you can move on you don't have to say that i mean if you do it theme wise your reader will in, will be intelligent enough to see that you are moving from one theme to another while reviewing that literature all right and finally you have the conclusion of uh, your literature review let me also add with it uh, identifying the gap okay that is where you identify your uh, gap in that particular research all right so after you have identified the gap and you have written it uh, now you are ready to proceed to uh, the next part of uh, your uh, your thesis uh, or, or your you know paper research paper that you plan to write uh, so uh, this is all students as far as uh, this presentation is concerned uh, Uh, any questions now uh, here is the title regarding the pain of self and other trauma transfer and narrative framing in jonathan safran foyt extremely loud and incredibly close okay now for the time being let's just go to uh, the literature review there are other things about this article uh which uh, you can find to be useful uh, you can also read this article as a as an example of uh, textual analysis of a, of a text okay um and also as an example of a, a literary research paper okay uh, i can i can upload it in in model or email that to you give me a second please uh, just yeah okay uh, any uh, students any among you who could please read out starting from here yes oh sir i can yeah please go ahead okay <clears throat> in addition to this rich narrative structure for embeds the experience of september 11 in various intertextual references to prominent literature of trauma such as gunter grass's tin drum w g c balls novel australids and lecture series love craig and literature and shakespeare's hamlet on the compositional level trauma transfer does takes place not only with regard to actual historical drama trauma sorry but also with regard to entrenched cultural archetypes and esteemed literary models of trauma work stylistic heterogeneity further adds to this polyphony of voices and references can you go further <clears throat> without doubt such complex narrative stylistic intertextual and historical heteroglossia emphasizes and enhances what mikhail bakhtin has identified as the inherent heteroglossia of the novel that is the persistent interaction and mutual conditioning of its various compositional units so i have to read further please continue so in in heteroglossia language becomes dal dialogue dal dialogues dialogues which means that it becomes relativized deep privileged aware of competing definitions definitions for the same thing we are somewhere else now seen in this slide the vivid dialogic imagination of poe's novel not only suggests oh i'm sorry where am i a nuance in multilateral approach to the novel's core drama of september 11 but it also offers up 
a most effective strategy for Butler's hoped for decentering account of trauma, as well as for the emergence of a transnational, trans historical ethics that Levi and Snyder have in mind. According to some critics, Poor accomplishes precisely that. Versilius uh, uh, insists within a highly contentious political context in which the Bush had to instrument the April 11 for its own partisan purposes. This book launches a strong plea for tolerance, refusing to take sides, or more precisely, takes the side of the irrespective of national religion. Birgit Davis uh, similarly argues that for multi layer narrative replaces the individual concern with the communal one, emphasizing the uh, need for several voices and dialogue, and in this manner subscribes ethically and structurally to a cosmopolitan memory. While I largely agree with these critics that the novel's renowned heteroglossia links Oscar's account of 9 11 in a provocative manner to other narrative frames. I'm more skeptical with regard to its inherent capacity of decentering a unilateral account of suffering. On the contrary, as I shall now, heteroglossia in the novel does not necessarily accomplish a dialogic engagement with others. Rather, it can also demonstrate the failure of inter-traumatic dialogue. This becomes evident when we shift our focus from the non diegetic compositional level to the uh, diegetic level of character perception. Okay, thanks. Yes, stop here. Okay, students, now, now starting from in addition, as it continues until here, what we see is that the writer is framing uh, her contention uh, uh, with reference to certain theoretical uh, debates. Uh, you might not uh, get the debates right away because uh, you have not read the you know, initial parts of the introductory part of uh, the essay. If you start from the beginning, I'm sure you will keep getting a sense of that. Okay, so he's kind of she's kind of explaining the contention that she initially developed right from the uh, you know top of the paper. So, for example, right over here you see uh, coping with trauma entails not only the repair of incurred physical damage but also the reconstruction of shattered narrative structures. Okay. So this is a kind of contending statement that she begins with. And then uh, we call it, in fact, you know, preview. So, and then she gives a preview of the theory that she will use, she will use over here, uh, the methodology right over here. Uh, we can discuss it later, uh, you know, uh, in, in little more detail so that you can uh, get an example of how uh, well, what, what a good literary paper looks like, okay, critical paper looks like. Uh, and then uh, from here, then uh, she starts explaining uh, the, the, the theory that uh, she has to support uh, and, you know, execute the research, the perspective she will. And, and then she keeps dealing with that, you know, until here until here at least. And then she becomes a little more specific about the theory. Now, this is a very long paper, I think 27, 27 pages, a single space, okay? Therefore, you can understand why uh, she is taking so much to just unravel the theory, which is at the back of this particular paper. Okay, so when uh, it reaches over here, uh, her uh, explication of the theory is almost over, you know, over here. And now she, uh, she, now she is, uh, she wants to turn to the analysis, okay? Analysis of the primary text. What is the primary text? It is a novel. Its title is written on the top, uh, extremely loud and incredibly close. So in the introduction part, she has the contention, she has the primary resources, she has the secondary resources, okay? Which are uh, the theoretical debates, okay? Um, over here, I just want to show to you, and uh, in fact, you will find more of that as you read on the article, how she handles the review of the literature on this primary uh, art, uh, text, which is uh, extremely loud and incredibly close, a, a novel 
a novel written by uh, Jonathan Foyer, an American novelist. Now, if you see this part, according to some critics, Foyer accomplished precisely that. Now, whatever debate she was trying to, theoretical debate she was trying to connect with the novel in terms of dialogic imagination, she says over here that according to some critics, Foyer accomplishes, accomplishes precisely that. Okay. And then, now it is just like saying that uh, uh, as I use my example, when I said that um, many critics have studied racism in Charles Dickens. All right. So according to some critics, Foyer accomplished precisely that. And each one of you will have your own language for this introductory line of your literature review. Versailles insists, and then a quote. Within a highly contentious political context in which the Bush administration tried to instrumentalize the events of September 11 for its own partisan purposes continues, irrespective of their national origin or religious, unquote. Now remember, this is a huge article, okay? Uh, pro I think it should be around 8,000 words or so, okay? So for that kind of article, it's okay to have longer quotes, all right? But as I said earlier, if you are use, writing a small paper, then use as less quotes as possible. But of course, the quotes uh, she picks, they directly reflect on the issue which is at hand, okay? And the second critic, Birgit Doyce, similarly argues that Foyer's multi-layered narrative replaces the individual concern with the communal one, emphasizing the need for several voices and dialogue. And in this manner, subscribes ethically and structurally to uh, cosmopolitan memory. You might notice over here, uh, this writer's Ilka Sal's effort to use phrases instead of complete sentences. I mean, she's trying that as much as she can help. And then now two critics have been quoted. Why just two? Understandably, because probably these are the only two critics who have reflected on this novel in terms of the uh, dialogism that she is trying to explore from the novel, right? Now, so two authors quoted. Uh, therefore, partially the literature review is written just this much. While I largely agree with these critics that the novel's pro pronounced heteroglossia links Oscar's account of 9-11 in a provocative manner to, another, to other narrative frames, I'm more skeptical with regard to its inherent capacity for decentering a unilateral account of suffering. Now notice this line. So it is like, this is what anybody can, can comment on where Ilka Sal is heading through this statement, I am more skeptical with regard to its inherent capacity. Creating a gap. Exactly. Gap. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's almost obvious, but I think this is a good example. Also notice the way she is um, stating that. Okay. So you don't have to use the words that I use that, uh, that, uh, uh, that I identify the gap or, you know, you don't have to do that. You might use, use other expressions as well. I'm more skeptical with regard to its inherent capacity. Uh, and then of course the rest of it is technical argument, but notice these words, I am more skeptical. You might say I am doubtful about, or I disagree with, or additionally, I find this thing in this novel or differing with the other authors or the previous authors or the authors mentioned above, I instead this propose this. So these are all versions of telling your reader that here it is that you found the gap, okay? And then students, please also notice the use of I in this, no, in this research article, okay? And MFS, uh, this modern fiction study is the novel in which this article is published. Uh, it is the top tiered globally. It is a top tiered uh, journal on modern fiction. Okay. And you might 
notice the, vocab, uh, the, the, the use of pronoun over here. And in fact, throughout the article, and the writer is very assertive in using I, you know, throughout the article, you, you might notice if you read it on your own, okay? So, so, so this is, uh, you know, to my understanding, uh, uh, a contemporary as well as a very uh, legitimate way to write your research paper in literature by using I, right? So uh, I'm more skeptical with regard to its inherent capacity for decentering a uni unilateral account of suffering. Now, if you notice on the contrary, as I shall show, heteroglossia in the novel does not necessarily accomplish a dialogic engagement with others. Now, uh, look at the clarity with which she has uh, disagreed with the foregoing authors. Rather, and then now she is going to begin her argument. It can also demonstrate the failure of intertraumatic dialogue. This becomes evident when we shift our focus from the non-deagetic compositional level to the deistic level of character perception. And then now, uh, if you if you look at this expression as I shall show, okay. So in the remaining the remaining article is going to be about showing this. What her contention for which she has reviewed the literature as well. 